Good morning, students. So, continuing the class on obturation techniques. So, in the previous two classes, we have learned what are the aims of obturation, what is the ideal timing of obturation, when should we start obturation after shaping and cleaning, what are the different techniques of obturation. We have also studied the lateral compaction where we use the gutta percha at the room temperature, plasticizing of gutta percha with the chemicals, warming the gutta percha within the canal either with the heat or mechanically that is thermomechanical uh, preparation and now coming to the next part that is thermoplasis gutta percha technique as I have mentioned here we plasticize the gutta percha outside the canal and then introduce it. So what is the technique? So there are different techniques with gun without gun you need not worry much about it. So one of the most common equipment that is used for obturation thermoplasis obturation the first the prototype was the obturer. So usually you are asked sometimes instead of asking thermoplasticized obturation you are also asked a question as obturer 1 or obturer 2 they are all the modifications. So on the whole these are high heat techniques. The first principle was introduced by E et al where he tried to soften the gutta percha outside the canal and then reintroduce it into the root canal. So it was a very prototype later many developments happened and then it was patented and marketed as Optura that also underwent many changes and later came to be Optura 2. Now this instrument is called the Optura 2 gun. Here we use around 160 to 200 degrees to soften the GP and then that GP which is softened is extruded out. When it is extruded usually the temperature is around 62 to 65 degrees and this remains soft for around 3 minutes. So inside the gun we have a heating chamber which heats the gutta percha and then it is extruded out. There are different forms of doing it. And so when it is extruded out this is how it is string the GP strings out which is viscous and sticky and usually it can be just tested but otherwise it is uncomfortable to touch. These are the GP pellets. As I mentioned earlier GP cones, GP pellets we have different forms and we also have carriers which we will be covering later. So this is the, these are the GP pellets. So how do we do? So the enlargement should be at least till the size 40 and make sure it is a tapered canal with the least, least diameter of the apex and as it proceeds coronally it should flare up. So this is how it is done. The gun, the funnel, uh, it is placed inside, the, the needle is placed inside and slowly the material is extruded. As it is extruded we bring back or step back with the needle. That is how it is done and this is more quicker when compared to other uh, obturation techniques. So in vertical compaction we have seen how step by step it is done but here at a stretch we can finish the whole obturation in a single step. So usually this type of obturation is done to completely fill the canals it can be used for backfilling. So by using vertical compaction the apical part the 3 mm of the GP can be left behind and the rest of the canal can be done with backfilling or when there are complicated cases with fins, webs, internal resorption or there are many accidents or lateral canals to be filled then thermoplasticized obturation would be the best option. This is one of the disadvantage of thermoplasticized obturation that is when you place the needle too apically and force it then there is every chance of this uh, thermoplasticized gutta percha being pushed beyond the apex and this is called and this in the IOP it is called a spaghetti phenomena. So this should be avoided when we are doing the thermoplasis gutta percha. So these are the pellets. Now just a small video to explain this procedure. So this is the gun which I mentioned.
chamber and we adjust the temperature so after 2 to 3 minutes of heating and this is done up to around 200 degrees So after the master cone is selected and the heating gun is ready, with it, Master cone, which is sheared off here, condensed with the plugger, and later the rest of the canal is filled. That is called back filling by thermoplastic obturation. So, an initial apical stop. Why do we this com? Why do we do this combination technique? Is to avoid the pushing of the material beyond the apex. So, initially we take a master cone which snugly fits the apical constriction, and then shear it off. And then the rest of the canal is filled with the thermoplastic gutta percha. So, coming to the next technique or the next variation in thermoplastic gutta percha technique, so we have some, seen the procedure with the gun. The other technique is the solid core carrier insertion, so which are already pre coated. So, this principle was first put forward by Ben Johnson, where he tried to coat the GP on a file and place it. So, a more, again that was a prototype, it was further developed and then it, into, it led to the introduction of thermophil, which is commercially known as, that's a commercial name. So, here we have a core material onto which the GP is coated and this core material is usually either the stainless steel, titanium or plastic, but ultimately plastic has been shown to have much advantages and these are how the carriers are. So, this is more simpler. This is placed. So, to know the exact size of these uh, carriers, we have we also have the size verifiers which are man which are supplied by the manufacturer. So, first if our preparation is 35 at the apical, apical end, so we place a 35 carrier, 35 size carrier. Earlier it was heated on a flame. This led to ununiform softening of the GP. So, later it led to the development of something called as a thermo, some oven, that oven named as Therma Prep Oven, which was further developed or again led to many developments, which was called as Therma Prep Plus Oven. This is how it gets heated, uniformly heated. And then this is placed into the root canal and the obturation is completed. 
so this is also called as a thermoplasticized gutta percha uh, thermoplasticized obturation because the gutta percha on the outer side of this carrier is softened outside the canal and then placed so this uh, was thought to avoid the contraction of the obturating material we know that something when is softened and again sets there is some amount of contraction so to overcome this disadvantage the carriers were used in the center which were either of metal or plastic assuming that that would reduce the contraction so but it had its own advantage advantages yes this is costlier when compared to the thermoplasticized uh, equipments and here the canals had to be minimum enlarged to at least 35 size so these are the different companies which supply this thermoplasticized carriers just coft core or one step there are many such so the other technique i discussed you earlier was apical third filling so where we do not use gutta percha or the dentin chips calcium hydroxide or mineral trioxide aggregate can be used to completely fill the canal Uh, how to fill it with calcium hydroxide and mineral trioxide aggregate will be covered in the further chapters as we go into apexification procedures so just a small on how this this dentin chip filling done so a coarse h file a bigger h file is taken and we do the filing procedures which pro this is after we have we have made sure that we have removed all the infectious material or the debris within the root canal and these chips later when it is filed the dentin chips are collected within the canal these are pushed to the apical side with a plugger so this is called as the dentin chip technique which is not routinely used later obturation is done with a gutta percha so calcium hydroxide again this is one of the apexification apexogenesis procedures which will be covered later one of the modification is gutta flow here the manufacturer claims that it is a combination of both the gutta percha and the sealer so this was one of the other method used so it comes in the capsule form it comes in the powder and liquid form which is activated and then as we press the plunger it comes out in a soft form which sets it is uh, something called as self curing filling material so it is usually initially very uh, less viscous which becomes hard as we as uh, after it is extruded in the root canal so this was claimed to be dimensionally stable no need of heat as compared to thermoplasticized gutta percha where we heat it so here the manufacturer claims that even without heating it can be so, uh, because, because of a chemical reaction it can be softened and introduced yes it uh, it is biocompatible and also easy for retreatment now after we finished all these obturation techniques just a small note on how to remove the gutta percha if we have to plan a retreatment if there is a failure of your endodontic treatment then there should also be another method to remove this so i think if you remember in your ideal requirements for the obturating materials we've also studied that one of the requirement is to be easily retrieved silver cones that was a disadvantage retrieving and resilon there was another material which was difficult for retrieval gutta percha is quite easy to remove it so how do we remove it it can be done in three methods mechanically by using the h files or by heating it thermally by using the uh, pen tips like touch and heat a system b pen or by a uh, external instrument which can be heated and softened or it can be done chemically but usually mechanically and thermally are the preferred methods gg drills piezo reamers are not the preferred methods for removing the gp of late this has been one of the most commonly instrument which is called the gpx bur which is used on a micro motor which helps in removing the gp gutta percha so these are the different methods and the least preferred method is uh, is the gutta percha solvents similar to the chemically plasticized gutta percha the same solvents here have been used to soften the gp so but the care we have to take is we have to make sure that these solvents do not reach the periapical area otherwise they cause a lot of damage to the periapical area so just few drops to be introduced in the coronal end and slowly the softened gp should be removed with the files so these are the different methods of obturations and the methods of removing it so we remove 
the gp either mechanically thermally or chemically the best preferred method is th mechanically next thermally least preferred is chemically so by this with this we end the chapter on obturation techniques so you should remember at the end that whatever obturation technique we use the success mainly depends only if we have completely shaped and cleaned the canal so a successful shaping and cleaning will only lead to the success of obturation and obturation all these obturation techniques which one should you use depends on the cases so one should be uh, the operator should be aware of all these techniques and customize them according to the case given so hope you you have understood if any doubts you can post it to us in the forum or you can personally message it to me